Is that so? Okay, now, me and you, we're gonna go buy chili powder. Chili! 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 What? Why to the man? Fine. You all have jobs to do. I should go talk to Jessica. Hello. Can I help you? So you sold your house? Yeah. Well, in fact, they made us an amazing offer. Is that right? A lot of your neighbors are sold too. Hey, you know that bad guy? Oh, Jeff, Valid something. He made us all a huge offers. Hard to say no. Apparently. Uh, Chili?
Pay Never, Pluto TV. Okay, okay, everyone just stay calm. No, 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 when I was asleep, where am I? I'm in a different room. I'm becoming like him, like Claude, I'm in narcolepsy. No, 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 sweetheart, it's just you drove him from the allergy pit or in law. Yeah, he didn't bite me, did he? He can't catch narcolepsy if you get picked on him. Oh, just that. Hey, Mel. What? What? Jake, what? I gotta go home. Take care. Bye. What's with you, Spaz? Get out. You're actually super weird. I can tell. And I know you hate Chandra. Okay, I hate Chandra because she's a sobby little jerk. It has nothing to do with you. No, I don't know what you want from me here. It's like the minute I, I don't show any interest, you're all over me. And then the next minute, when I actually show you some attention, you treat me like... Yes. What? It's true. Shut up. Ribna? Kalina. Is Jake robbing a bank? Hi. Hi. Des, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Yes. Yes. Put your hands down! Put your hands down now! Okay? Everyone just relax and breathe. Whoa, what are you doing? Put the money back out of your purse, okay? Nobody steal anything! We're not robbing anything, okay? Put it away. This is all a horrible misunderstanding. All right, now we're just going to relax here. All right, um, 
What we're going to do is, in a few minutes, we'll all just go home, pretend it's never happened, and uh, no harm, and, uh, and no foul. Oh, crap. That's not good. I have no clue. Hey, Leslie, any idea what he's doing in there? He's robbing a bank. What's your word? I gotta think here, I gotta think. So, uh, uh, everyone get up and uh, go over there to where the guard is to, right there. You said you weren't robbing the place, right? So, so. I'm not robbing the place, but I still want you to do what I say. So, go, 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 everyone. Keep going, keep going straight, straight, straight. There you go, get over there, everyone. Jay, are you robbing the place? Are you out of your mind? Oh, welcome back! Dip. Balance? Yeah, yeah. You son of a. You! Stay! Stay! <laughs> okay, Dallas. Sit. Although Clyde here is the sole reason I am in this predicament, I'm still gonna blame you and I'm gonna shoot you if you don't answer my questions directly. You understand? Okay. Clyde thinks that you're ah, over. Been... And there are currently three charges against you. Number one, he thinks that you're sleeping with his wife Jessica. Why is that? That's that's insane. I know. I totally agree with you because personally, I, I really don't think that you're her type. I mean, the hair color, the way you dress, it's all wrong. Anyway, charge number two. He thinks that he stole $100,000 from me. Looking at you, I really don't think you're that stupid. I didn't rob any hundred grand, no. That brings us to charge number three. That you foreclosed on his house early and without just cause. Right. And the question I have for you, Mr. Vallis, is what? <laughs> what? Relax, everyone. It's cold, okay? Just... You stay away. Hello? Have you lost your mind? Why are you robbing a bank? I'm not robbing a bank. Sure looks that way to me. Yeah, I know it looks that way, Dad. Thanks, thanks for the brilliant insight, okay? You just keep everyone up there calm. And don't leave until you hear from me. Yeah. He hung up. She what? Yeah. This is Mel. Tell your bank robbing son to give me my money or Clyde's wife and pointing out at you toast. Yeah, whoever this is, tell Clyde to give this guy his money. You have one hour. <laughs> All right, Clyde, let's just get this all over with, okay? We know that you foreclosed on Clyde too early, and you bought every house on the street for over market value. What are you cooking up, and how is Jessica involved? Look, look, I didn't think there was a No, no, I just, uh, I, I uh, paid her uh, a few bucks to help me. Help you do what? I was using my position here at the bank. I was buying a little land. I had a deal with his, uh, his wife. If, if she was able to get him, all right, to miss the payments, I... I'm for close and uh percentage. Percentage of what? Percentage of what? It's an oil discovery. It was huge. I caught her in. We were we were gonna get rich. That's it. You sold on the hour. Jessica. So what is it? The loan shark's got Jessica. <laughs> you wait for my signal. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> Hi, there. <laughs> Look, I just want you to know that the way this is all playing out is not at all how it's actually playing out. Get the hell out of here now. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll release all of you. Hostages? They're not hostages. They're people. Bank people. People in a bank. And I'm just going to get all... to release them. And then uh, you wait a couple of minutes, and then you, you come in and you get... And I say, feel free to be rough. So I tell you, I deserve it.
Where is it? Boogie Yakalot Grimbo. Sort of? Sort of? This man uh, just robbed the bank. Okay, look, I listen. No, just, just give me a second, please. Just, Jessica, I'm led to believe that you, Jessica. This has screwed me over. Did you take my hundred grand? Yes, I screwed you over, but I never took your money. You and Vax, you sold me up. Why? My future? You could never give me one, so I, I had to make my own. I am so sick of this crap. Kyle, a, a lot of people are, okay? Just wait. I saw you on the TV. You were robbing a bank. Now give me my money. Oh, I was starting to feel sleep. Here we oh. go. Oh, I'm <laughs> okay, look, I didn't rob a bank. Okay, I, I, I get it. You know what? I'm just gonna kill you guys. Get it over with. When Clyde wakes up, I'm gonna play baseball with his kneecaps. 
until he remembers where he stashed my friggin' money. Shelly. <laughs> Tells me, having watched the tape to the bank robbery, that you weren't there to steal anything. 
But you don't have any wiggle room to get me out. I'm sorry. I told you your crap was going to get you in trouble. And now it has. Looks like you're going to be bunking in the Majesty's pen for some time. Almost oh, Described video. The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, you think? How do we get in here? 
You wanted Leto to figure out that I was working for Saul. Okay. You knew that there were security cameras that faced the street. You knew that he would see you sitting in my car. What are you playing at? Excuse me? With my mic? Is it on? No. See, I think that you want Leto to know that Saul's trying to steal his guns. You want them to take each other out. So you can get a top dog. Do I confuse you somehow? Do you do what I say? What I say? You have come up with theories. And I'm telling you to find Alex Marshall or your daughter becomes a member. Yeah. That's an imprint of a key for a room in this hotel. This wallet is Alex's. Happy? Which is why we're here. <laughs> Let's find a key and a holder. Um, this isn't one of my theories, so don't get all upset. But I'm pretty sure that's one of those men. Deal with it. Oh, you were just charming. I can't wait to bring you home and beat the fire. <laughs> Just make sure that it's all safe. Goodbye. 
This is getting way out of control. Yep, yes it is. You better go help him. Yep, yes I will. So, uh, that thing about never seeing you, you know. Me? Oh. Just like situation. <laughs> Scenes of violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Those are targeted shots? Sure. He's watching. Sam, Lee, what do you got? Ricochet mark on the stealth there. Could be above us, could be below us. Didn't see any muzzle flash. He's in our blind spot. Okay, could be the cat walk, could be the gondola, could be the Gracies, it could be the Greens. Okay, we don't see anything on the cam. The owner of the rifle. Yeah, Jules, what? He was at home. And who's firing on my team? It's his hunting rifle. He says someone must have stolen it, claims to not know that was missing. And you believe him? Ex hockey player, hockey coach. His rifle goes missing. You know what we call that in the police business? Hinky? Hinky. Interrogate him. Uniform to bring him in. Your unit is trespassing. Leave the building immediately. I repeat, you are a trespass. Leave right now, right now. Okay, the wires run into the press guard on the line. It's got to be the announcer moving north east corner. Okay. Eddie, we're going up there. Eddie, you can get out from the south. you got to be careful, okay? It's a lot of hard work. Copy that. Wrong way, Sam. 
You can come if you still might be in there. Introducing Icy Hot Pro. Icy to dull your pain. Hot to relax. Get relief because you don't want to sit this one out. New Icy Hot Pro. Rise from pain. Thank your skin for growing and supporting you. With Nivea Nourishing Body Milk and new 5-in-1 Complete Care. Filled with everything your skin needs to be nourished, beautiful, and healthy looking. Give your skin all it deserves. Nivea. Subway delivery! <laughs> Welcome to the Eat Fresh Refresh, bringing you a fresh new way.
Who you cla? Getting the black mark of a white boss for now. Afghanistan left over some more world from Russia. But this guy is military. Didn't break the skin, you're gonna be okay. If it had would have gotten the blood stream, it would have damaged his organs. Son of a bitch. When you call to reference recent that's criminal records, I have 37 names. Sure, sure. The bad guys with records enter the military? No, they get their records after they come home. Domestic disturbance, assault, DUI, possession of controlled substances. Somehow recklessness and aggression and the lack of impulse control. I'm trying to feel something again or not feel something. Okay. Jules, one of those 37 vets might be taking this personally. I'm looking for a connection. Sergeant Parker. Uh, yeah. You said for... Charlie Howard. I used to be on usher here at 77 to 98. Hey, Charlie. Sergeant Parker, so you think you're coming? Sergeant Parker, I got something straight. Uh, somebody's oh, trying to stop this demolition, and you want me to help you good. stop it. Yeah, we hear you, Charlie, but it's his methods that we're not happy about. His methods, Charlie, live fire, chemical assault against my team. Okay, I got you. And he's a step ahead of us because he knows every inch of this place. I mean, he's been squatting here. It's a fair assumption. Well, maybe found the bunker. The bunker? Daniel Godwin's secret apartment. I only saw it once. I mean, the map like his privacy. Hey, can you show us where it is? Well, no, hey, not on the map. But like I said, I only saw it once, and that was, wow, Toronto versus Pittsburgh, 87. Let me guess, we lost. Hey, I'm sorry. All right, John, this is important here, okay? Do you remember where? I just remember it was near a concession stand. There's 24 concession stands. Well, let's get out there. You know, the old muscle memory will kick in. No, it's too risky, Charlie. Yeah, I, I gotta be at my feet. All right, trust me, I'll know when I feel it. All right, we're taking the diamond formation through the concession stands. They got great visibility. I'll be safe. Okay. Uh, Already flee of Sam. Let's go. Okay, let me try him on the cell phone. Maybe I'll talk to you. You okay if I keep Sam? It's like, yeah. All right, Charlie, let's get you dressed, guys. Let's go. Hey, Jules, I'm sending a text to Boss's phone. This guy picks up. Are you going to be able to patch it over the headset? No problem. Again, I've been here since the 94 playoffs. Chicago, game five. See that game? <sighs> I would have freaking killed to see that game. But I had a tournament in Hamilton. Get out of here. You must have been what? Bantam? Pee Wee? I, I didn't have a choice. The team needed me. So, uh, how did it go in Hamilton? It was the best we ever played. Really? Had to make it worthwhile, right? <laughs> So somebody broke into your garage, went straight for a concealed rifle, didn't touch anything else. That's right. Or you gave it to someone. I didn't give it to anyone. Then who knows where you keep your locked rifle? Why are you assuming that? Because you're a hockey coach and this is a hockey arena. And I'm not convinced that this is a coincidence. I wish I could help you. Well, you're not leaving until you do. What position did you play? Um, really? Oh, I'll go for this cross, right? And the thing teach position. Cover for anyone. <laughs> Sounds like my unit. So why this place? This place. Yeah. 
this is where anything that ever happens happens. Uh, all right, let's talk about the divisional finals in Hamilton 1994. Who's on that team? I have 37 names of men who just came back from military services overseas who had a rocky landing. It's going to take me about 10 oh, minutes for the names of the guys on the teams you coached. And about three seconds to narrow that down to one name to call me. Look, there's a young man in there, and you know him. And I'm guessing you care about him. If you don't help me right now... Darren Colfax. Thank you. Subject's name is Darren Colfax. Thanks, Jules Wayne. Find me family for Darren Colfax. Pop it out. See if you get military records, too. Those could be classified. Pull strings, whatever it takes, Wayne. Got it. First time I saw a client was right here at the Coliseum. It was at a novice league fundraiser. He blew everyone away. He was eight. And when you're here, you know what you're for. If you're on the stands or you're on the ice, you know what you're for. You feel like you belong. I hear you. We took him under my wing and held him up the ladder. I mean, he, he, he was this close to turning pro. What happened? He comes to me one day and he... Tells me he wants to go serve on another team for a while. And you know you can count on your team. Yeah. Through all the the blood, the sweat, the crap. That was a promise. <laughs> my heart is <laughs> so and, and not just because of the hockey. You spent so many hours together. <laughs> You're such a damn good kid. Don't you come back? He came back. Most of all. Well, when things got bad over there, I had one thing I could hold on to. I knew I'd be back here one day. Back at the Dogman Coliseum. Generous. Totally worth it. 
glad to hear my name. That's, uh, that's our MO. We like to know who we're talking to. I was in the forces for a couple of years when I was young. So was my dad. I mean, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. You serve your country. But when Darren told me that he wanted to take his turn, I wasn't happy. It was a bright future he's putting on all the I knew it. It killed me to see him do that. But I always told my son, you make your choice. So I, I couldn't stand in his way. Where was he deployed? Ken Hart. Hey, you found his, his musketeers. Hey, it's Howie Carson, his right winger. Yeah, a little Howie, Jordan, Pete. Those guys, they meant everything to him. What happened to Kandar? Uh, they lost. Yeah, and what else did they do? I don't know what it was like over there. You know you are a war. You don't know why. I know. Everyone's is different. Sam Darren lost his three closest friends in patrol near Kandahar. IED took them out and walked away without a scratch. Copy that. You want to know what my war was, Kovacs? How long does this march? Sniper. Yeah. And I served with a friend, too. Close friend, Ben. He didn't make it. When I found him, he'd been here with a 50 cal. There was nothing on him left. Is that what you gave me? He has to know, I understand. I get that. He has to hear that he's not alone, okay? You don't have to push too hard. I was just kidding. This is what I can tell him. Kovacs, is that Hungarian? Yeah. See how those mean anything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
ね、ちょっと見ろ。待てない、日中。
We gave him the upper hand because we trust him. No, I trust him. You killed him. Didn't have to be like that. He was clearly threatening both Spike and Sam, you. Sam, you did great. You just, you lost perspective. You put yourself right in the line of fire. I and knew him. You understand? I knew him. Okay, what do you think he wanted, Sam? He wanted to save the arena. It's not your fault. Look, look, he, he needed a mission to defend the last place left. Where things made sense, where things were fair. Mm -hmm. He wasn't gonna hurt me. We couldn't take that chance. He's never taken that oh, chance. Yeah. <laughs> God bless it. it. He's got a point. More You've done mine. it, I've done it, but the question is why'd you do it? For Darren? Or for Ben? Maybe you wanted a second mm -hmm. chance to save your friend. Mm -hmm. so, Darren applied to return to service. He wanted to go back. Why was he doing that? Because they found him psychologically unfit. Darren was suffering from post-traumatic stress and he wanted to go back. Sam, what was the last thing he said? Uh, he said, uh, I'm a good soldier. I'm back to take Right there. With mm -hmm. the He said, see you on the other side. See you on toast. It's a battle cry. Yeah, but not this time. He was saying goodbye to you, Sam. That's why he wanted to go back. He thought he should have died with his friends the first time around. So tired. That's when he knew that it was over. Sam. His connection with you was real. But he knew what he wanted. There was nothing he could have done since Jim Sam. Yeah, as for you. He wanted me to kill him outside. Uh, so I gotta get it. Join the SRU. I didn't want to be a point and shoot guy. I didn't want to take people up from my way. I wanted to save people. No, I'm close. I don't want to die. I should have been able to reach. And the one guy I couldn't I was an objective. I put my team at risk. I don't belong here. Yeah. 
this punch you guys. I know the cops and the military guys will meet up on the top and we help each other keep this together. Greg and I are Friday night. this? I do. Do you? Maybe not. But your doctor does. Ask your doctor about it and see if Contrave is right for you. Get free counseling and save up to 25% on your tablets with the Contrave support program. Quaker Harvest Crunch. We have 100% real Canadian hosts. For 100% real Canadian morning. And drive skin. Use certain complete repair has a unique combination of urea and ceramides that retain moisture to strengthen the skin's natural barrier for long lasting dry skin relief. Use certain recommended by dermatologists. Here's Liz. He's literally stopping on the bike. But instead of period pads, she bought Poise Ultra Fit. So she can bounce on with clean, dry, fresh protection from Poise. God, nice job, everybody. When the cooking competition ends, the dishwashing competition begins. And the bigger bottle isn't always the better value. Unlike this diluted dish soap, Dark Platinum is small and powerful with an ultra concentrated formula and more grease cleaning power. So, when the other stuff runs out, Dawn Platinum keeps going to clean up to 2,000 more dishes. Dawn Platinum cleans more so you save more. 1013 Virgin Radio wants to take your deck and destroy it. Listen to Virgin Mornings with Derek, Megan, and Amateur Alex for your chance to win $100,000. Destroy your deck with Virgin Radio. Oh, fucking nerf. Me? 
DJ. Ah, uh, Fabachi. <laughs> I would like to restart it anyway. Now some students living in another residence have been asked if they'd like to give up their home to athletes for about two weeks. Students staying at Andrew Hall have been offered $1,500 by the Canada Games to pack up and store their things and find another place to live. Some students were excited to accept the offer. Our and I both took, it, took up the offer. It's 1500 bucks. It's pretty nice. Yeah, so we're moving out with a uh, friend here in the city. So no something pretty good deal to do. Well, I'm going away to Florida during the anyway. So I was like, oh. well, I'll just let like, them use my room then. Because I'll be there. <laughs> Other students say it isn't enough to move out. <laughs> Oh yeah, I am planning to stay here in Andrew Hall. They provide everything here, so oh, I'm not giving up with us, yeah. my spot in Andrew <laughs> Hall for fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm doing a directed study here, so I'm gonna be working on that over the break. Tentative. Also, there were supposed Me to be you. enough rooms Remember? in the new building, but it ended up that there was so it was kind of Ask. it seemed kind of like a last minute thing where they were asking. Sacquenario Tenaniwa. UPEI says it was excited to help find homes for the athletes. Oh. Games organizers say they noticed they would need more rooms about six weeks ago. Well, there's 120 athletes across the country. They're going to have a wow experience on the campus of the University of Washington campus. We did not have to put up in a hotel. Peru wasn't surprised to students took up on the offer. It's a little boy in Peru. Peru wasn't surprised to students took up on the offer. It's a little boy in Peru. 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 It's a little uh, they didn't have to do that so the 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 as far as the students of the front of the class for those 120 athletes. Students of 44 units have decided to leave their rooms and allow athletes to stay. Karim says that's enough to house the 120 athletes he was looking for accommodations for. The Canada Games begin on February 18th. Tony Davis, CBC News, Charlottetown. A long-time PC MLA will not be running in the next provincial election. James Elward says the last few months have been challenging and that stepping back is the best decision. Elward was first elected in 2011. He represents District 6, Stratford Kepik. He served as the leader of the PC party, the health minister, and most recently, the minister of transportation. Elward's life died in the fall, and he says the past few months have been challenging. He says not reoperating is the best decision for <laughs> him and his family. Little it's Danny time boy. for a new face to come forward and represent the district. Elward will stay in the position until the writ is issued. PI's apartment vacancy rate has dropped below 1%. That's the percentage of rental units that are available from the total number that exists. Well, the CMHC says that vacancy rate on the island hit 0.8% in 2022, falling from 1.5% the year before. The rate has fall far below the national average of 1.9%. An economic analyst says high mortgage rates and inflation means people are staying in the rental market longer, driving up demand and prices. As long as the rental market <laughs> remains this tight, we can expect um, rent prices. Uh, to continue increasing, but at the same time, like I think, an increase in rent price is a good signal that we need more to be built. Kelvin Nadoro says high rent and a lack of options pose an added challenge for people from low-income households. He says building more units can be one way to increase vacancy rates, including having having more affordable and social housing options. Well, it's been feeling more like winter outside in recent weeks, and with the low temperatures and snow on the ground, it's time to bundle up. But some families are struggling to afford winter beer for their kids. The Salvation Army says demand is on the rise. She and Desjardins has that story. Recess is over at West Royalty Elementary. On cold days like today, warm boots are a must. But some kids don't always have a pair. The school has extras on hand for students who need them. 
we've had parents that um, their children have outgrown clothes and they ask the school if there's a need and if there's a need we certainly are more than uh, willing to accept them. Well these are brand new jackets that we have for uh, kids. The Salvation Army says the need for children's winter wear is increasing. Demand is up at least 30 percent compared to last year. They have some coats available now but are looking for boots and snow pants. We have a coat rack downstairs and a, and a boot rack where they go over and they'll look and they'll say, hey, do you have any snow pants or do you have any boots of this size? And, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of tugs at our heartstrings that we have to say, no, I'm sorry, we don't. Some teachers here have also been pitching in recently, taking matters into their own hands, paying out of pocket to get their students what they need. I know our teachers uh, step up to the plate all the time. Um, for whatever it is, um, if there's a child in need, whether it's buying a kid a chocolate milk or um, finding uh, things that they may need, um, whether for home or for school. The Teachers Federation says that's nothing new. Teachers often go out of their way to make sure their students are supported. Teaching is a caring profession, and I think as well, we are in a time when we know that families, uh, there are burdens financially, and I think Oftentimes, when we recognize these situations, uh, teachers do what they can to help out and, and help ease the burdens for families. Back at West Royalty, the principal says the school does take donations, but asks the public to call in advance. That way they can make sure there is enough room in storage and a family who can use it. She and Desjardins, CBC News, Charlottetown. The public schools branch hosted the first meeting of its newly elected board of trustees last night. It was the first meeting of an elected board in more than a decade. Trustees from the English school board seven zones were at the meeting along with the director of the PSP. One of the first orders of business was officially appointing Heather Mullen as chair of the board. She says the group started meeting last month. They've been working through training and defining their roles with the PSP. One of the board's first priorities is making sure trustees are accessible to the people they represent. One of the things we talked about right away is, is transparency, accessibility, and engagement. We, it's the first time going back to elected boards in 14 years. So what do these board meetings look like and how do people reach out to us and how do they engage at our meetings? We represent vast areas of this island and we need to learn from each other and work together and bring those issues together. So I want to make sure every trustee is heard, appreciated, and that, that we're working collaboratively. The trustees are, are out representing the zones and their communities and the families and schools. And and that's a really positive thing uh, for the public schools branch. So we're looking forward to that, but we do need to delineate the roles and make sure uh, that the roles of governance and the roles of the operations are, uh, are clear, clear to us and uh, clear to the public as well. The board plans to travel to different communities across PEI for each meeting giving people in all areas of the province more chance to speak to them directly. The group is working on setting up a schedule for the next few meetings and will make it public in the coming weeks. You put a pen on PI's there? environment minister has signed a moratorium on short... Leave wow. that. Suborny Quabe. <laughs> ...controls on what can be built along the coast. No details of the order have been made public. Harry Campbell has more. <laughs> the 16th hole at Crowbush Cove, the marquee image PEI uses to promote its golf courses, scenic but also susceptible to erosion, just like the rest of PEI's coastline. This week, a construction company is adding to work begun four years ago, installing tons more armor stone to fortify the shore. What I will commit to the <laughs> is this. There will be a moratorium in place on any new development on the shoreline until we get this policy. Thank you. PEI's Department of Environment says an order restricting development within buffer zones promised almost two months ago has now been signed by the minister, but the work at Crowbush can go ahead because it's in response to post-tropical storm Fiona. Beyond that, it's not clear what the new moratorium applies to. It hasn't yet been made public and the province isn't releasing details except to say it's working with climate researchers at UPEI to develop a new policy on how shorelines should be protected.
it could be a combination of solutions which is going to help us out. It might not be a single solution. And as, as Farouk says, there's promising data on techniques like this. Living Shoreline, phase one of the proposed research will take four to six months. <laughs> phase two, three to five years. He wouldn't comment on this property, which sparked much of the current political debate, but said <laughs> protecting a single property from erosion like this is not the way to go. Whatever protection oh, we propose, I think along the coast they need to be consistent so that the water is not kind of leaning in and kind of protecting one side but kind of causing damage on the other side. So the the, the benefits of it, like the which is in here is the shoreline protection, it's for everyone. Based on development in places like Point de Roche, there are already concerns the province's new restrictions don't go far enough. I think that the moratorium should be all-encompassing because when we look at what transpired, and there's a, an array of other similar developments that are clearly not in compliance with the existing regulations. Uh, <laughs> Critics say what PEI needs isn't the new policy the minister has promised, but rather a comprehensive new law, similar to one coming into effect in Nova Scotia, that could provide better protection for PEI's coastlines and better oversight of how government deals with development issues. Harry Campbell, CBC News, Stratford. Gas, furnace oil, and diesel all jumped in price overnight. It was a scheduled adjustment by IRAC. Gas is up five cents today, bringing the price of the pumps to a dollar seventy-one a liter. Heating oil and diesel both broke. Such a tremendous. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm going to keep this forever. Why? It's actually quite an honor, believe it or not. Kathy Cooper. Oh, grown up. This isn't really a good time for us right now. I'm sure you understand. Yeah, I should explain. Um, I'm Adrian Monk. I'm working with the San Francisco Police. That's why I'm here. I'm not some crazy fanatical group. I can't believe I'm actually talking to you. I'm, I'm not going to hear Mr. Monk's assistant. icy patches on the roads today and not a lot in terms of precipitation now i know folks in western parts county you're going to look at that snow total from boxing river and you're going to say more fell possibly did there was a lot of melting so getting an accurate observation for our volunteer observers across the island would have been a tricky uh, situation to say the least uh, but you did also have a lot of snow on the ground from monday's weather i know it was more of a mix for the eastern half of the island up west it was all snow so even if it was lighter snow that wind was roaring and blowing and drifting also added to the mess there yesterday morning. Now you can see winds were indeed the big problem. Anywhere from 80 to over 100 kilometer per hour gusts were reported. As we uh, take a look at the satellite and radar shot, fairly quiet conditions tonight. It is going to be clear. The wind is continuing to ease. Actually, it will become light and variable through the overnight hours tonight. Temperatures will be cool as a result, but still a bit warmer than they should be for a typical January night. Uh, we'll see a sunny start to the day tomorrow morning. A few clouds will begin to increase through the afternoon, and there was a chance for some very scattered or very isolated, either wet snow or mixing with rain showers into your Saturday evening as temperatures late in the day do bump up uh, about a degree or so above the freezing mark, thanks to a warm and also late in the day, pretty gusty south to southwest wind that will be picking up through the afternoon and the evening. Sunday's forecast? Very similar. I'll be back with those details, plus we'll take a look at the week ahead as we take a live look now of University Avenue heading to break. I'll have your full seven-day forecast just ahead. Steve has more of today's news. Compass continues in just a few. Ransom, President and CEO of Now, you can do something about it. Cardio Mobile, the personal ECG device, allows you to take an ECG anytime, anywhere you.
have any. And asked if we had a water softener, which we didn't, and we gave you a call. Within a week, she was feeling much better, sleeping better, and much more comfortable. Call and ask about her seven-day free trial at no cost or obligation. Thanks, Ma. You know that Jewelry Plus buys diamonds in Antwerp, Belgium. But did you know we buy diamonds locally? Can you explain that music again? Can we have a talk about it? Can we have a talk about it? Can we have a talk about it? It was a great dad. What was he like, you know, in real life? Was he nice? You haven't read my book, have you? No, not yet. I can't wait. Oh, listen, let's watch the, the babysitter episode. Can we please? Canada are facing a national lifeguard shortage, and that's led an aquatic center in St. John, New Brunswick, to try a new approach. Three retirees who regularly swim there have been recruited to become part-time lifeguards. The trio are calling themselves Greywatch. Have a look at this. Go, go. Well, what's happening here today is there are three of us are what you would call older people. We're going to be being tested for our bronze cross in an effort to become certified lifeguards. You got him? You got him. It's pretty intense. Yeah. It really is. There are things that have pushed me and I'm guessing pushed all of us this week to do things that we didn't we weren't sure if we could do very challenging well I never dove underwater like I have in the last week and retrieving 10 pound bricks and mannequins that probably weigh about 40 pounds of bringing them up and swimming 20 meters with it and holding it above water it's like very difficult Now I retired uh, when I was 58, and I'm 67 right now. And I started training for triathlons four years ago. That's why I'm coming here and training for this to drive down the deep end, and it was more intimidating what I had to do in St. Mark's, so I'd like to say. No breathing? I'm going to continue the compressions. 30. You know, the sky's the limit. Your body to look after it and uh, look after it, and you can do anything. You know, if you're lucky enough to have good health, uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to have good health, right? It certainly just encourages to put you down the path to living a healthy lifestyle and uh, you can live longer and enjoy your life more. And I'm going to continue this cycle five times in two minutes. To be honest, I didn't really want to at first. <laughs> 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 I don't want to respond to you. I'm glad it's a sense of accomplishment. Everybody likes a challenge. It is challenges that are like, <laughs> my age to do that. The main thing now I'm finding out is such a good team environment here. There's the other lifeguards, they look up to you and they support you and you, you know you're not alone. You see the lifeguards, they have the tubes tied up. Everything that we're doing and have done and will have to do to pass this course is the same thing that any 15, 16, 18 year old has to do. There is no favoritism for us whatsoever. We have to do what they've had to do as well. Uh, <laughs> We'll be back next with his full look at the forecast. And as we take you to break, here, we'll look at the current temperatures across the country from Environment Camp. We're back right after this. I'm Mitch Courtney. Coming up Monday on Island Morning, more folks than ever are wanting to improve their English language skills, either through formal EAL courses or beyond. And the public schools branch has had to find a way to meet that demand for both adults and children. We'll talk about those efforts Monday, Island Morning at 96.1 FM. And the listen. Done some unexpected things in the name of science, like this, and this, and even this. Join me next time on Planet Wonder, and let's explore the natural world together on CBC News Explorer, available free. One ten-pound lasagna serves eight. Abba, I know it. Ah.
Yeah. How can you protect yourself from continually uh, rising healthcare costs <laughs> not covered by your government health insurance? So you, you're Which... that I was so happy. I, I was. I, I, I was cheering. Like, ah! Linda. and adds good bacteria that helps relieve IBS symptoms. Try Align today. Also try Align Advanced with five times more good bacteria. And join the Align Healthy Gut team. Learn what millions of Align users already know. How great it feels to support your gut health. Sign up at alignprobiotics.ca. Hey, tourism operators. Prince Edward Island is going the extra mile. Research tells us the number one concern of travelers coming out of the pandemic is their health and safety. TIEFI has developed a health and safety certification program for operators called Safe Haven. I completed the training and I see how this will give us a real life out over other destinations and improve our bottom line. Fellow operators, register to. Remember? Do you remember? Do I remember? Yeah. Yeah, sort of rings a bell. <laughs> Who is this guy? I'm, I'm, I'm Adrian Monk. Have you been receiving letters too? Oh my god. She's probably after the whole cast. Okay, it's going to be okay. We got a photo of the guy. We got samples of his handwriting. Mom, All right, listen, we are going to, we're going to catch this screen. Mom, me and him. Mom, don't you worry. Mom, you have my word because he picked on the wrong family. Mom, uh, we are questioning Mr. Dorm about the accident this morning. He is a person of interest. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a joke, Captain. He, he was in the Cooper clan. He was Billy. Billy Cooper. Say Shucky Dorn. No. Come on, just say it. Her former co-star Stephen Dorn declared Christine Rapp is dead to me. That is a figure of speech. She's a loudmouth, a liar, and a tramp. <laughs> Next time I run into her, I hope I'm driving a truck. Did you hmm. say that? Why would you say that? Because she's a loudmouth, a liar, and a tramp. You need a nice weekend. This uneventful, full sunshine. Okay, temperature is below freezing. He's already delivered the forecast. <laughs> is it? Have a good night. Good night. Oh, well, he doesn't say good night to you. I'm just telling you what I want. No, you just, that's the forecast. You just nailed it. So, uh, all right, we'll be back after this short break. Perfect. No, I'm being told by my bosses I still have to deliver the seven day forecast. Let's go to the temperature. It's not easy. the temperatures right now across the EI uh, between minus three and minus four. And uh, the wind is still breezy it's from the west. It's easing. It'll be light and variable tonight. It does pick up through the day tomorrow, but it's that southerly wind. So we'll see temperatures up in and around the freezing mark tomorrow. Clouds will build later in the day, but it's a decent forecast for the weekend. It's not uh, nearly as messy as Steve was just saying as the week that was. No advisories in effect across Prince Edward Island at the moment. Now, the wind is coming in from the west. Still quite a clip. You can see near 40 kilometers per hour sustained up at the North Cape Reporting Station, not the 70 to over 100 kilometer per hour peak gusts we saw with yesterday's mess. It was not the heaviest precipitation event, although I know it was very messy uh, to start the day up in uh, Prince County, western Prince County in particular. Uh, but we did see a really more of a wind event from this one. That was uh, some pretty strong winds from the south, southeast through the day. Fairly quiet by comparison today. They'll really enjoy that sunshine. Do watch for some icy patches on the roads. Just, again, temperatures up around the freezing mark tomorrow. A bit of sun 
on that asphalt, on that pavement, that could result in uh, some more ice patches as that temperature dips back down into early Sunday. Other than that, not really much to worry about Saturday through Sunday. Sunday night into Monday, some wet snow and rain. Could see some accumulating snow over western areas. Uh, but overall, the weekend forecast looks pretty nice. So we'll start out sunny in the morning. I do see some clouds building through the afternoon. Not as cloudy as this forecast model is showing. And then as we get into Saturday evening, very light, but some wet snow rain showers, more scattered in nature, do work their way from west to east across the uh, province. And then starting out Sunday, I do expect it to be a bit sunnier to start the day, but clouds will build through the afternoon. And really Sunday night, this approaching weather maker uh, will bring some wet snow to rain showers. Again, mixing central, some wet snow, maybe a bit of rain mixing it up west. Still too early to be certain. Uh, and some rain showers for eastern areas, looking at the latest guidance. It's not overly heavy. But some of the guidance is hinting at some uh, 5 to over 10 centimeters of wet snow possible at the moment in the western Prince County Sunday night into Monday. So do keep that in mind. Not a guarantee that you'll see those amounts. It's Monday, Sunday into Monday, so we're still a few days out. But just something to keep in mind. I know it's exam week next week. So we'll be paying close attention to that forecast uh, next week as well, day to day. Uh, temperature wise tonight, big range, minus eight to minus 12 over Western uh, Prince Edward Island with uh, very clear conditions this evening and overnight. We'll see a mix of sun and cloud tomorrow, starting out sunnier, becoming a bit cloudier through the afternoon. And that wind could be gusting over 50, 60 kilometers per hour by the time we get into the evening. Uh, so picking up through the afternoon up west. And then as we look to central and eastern areas tonight, those temperatures, again, big range, minus five, minus six down into Wood Islands by the water, which has all what could be a record low in terms of ice coverage this winter. We just set that record, by the way, just two years ago. Uh, but we'll watch for uh, cooler temperatures inland. Charlottetown Airport, minus 10, even minus 11 possible. And then warming up above that seasonal average. Should be around minus 4. We'll be between 0 and plus 1 for central and eastern PEI tomorrow. And the wind, fairly late in the morning, but it does pick up for the afternoon. Again, sun cloud mix, but some late day light rain snow showers possible. Better chance for evening snow and rain as we look to Sunday. Could linger into Monday as well, and you may see some accumulation into Monday morning over western areas. That's with the latest guidance. As we look at the long range forecast, I do see some much cooler weather building in next week, so we'll keep our eye on that. I know fans of backyard rinks have been really asking for temperatures like this. We'll keep an eye on if that's going to be a consistent pattern going forward. Let's take a look now at our first photo for you tonight. Paul Stewart sending this one in. Oh, I love these Fox photos. This is like Prince Edward Island at its finest. I love that photo right there. That could be a, a PEI postcard. Very wise. Uh, that was in his backyard, too, by the way. Thanks, Paul, for sending that one in. Compass at cbc.ca. I know it's comfortable in that, uh, in that winter coat there. Uh, you can always share through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Thanks. Your forecast was much more detailed than mine. I appreciate it. I, I think you nailed it. <laughs> All right. We'll see you back here again before the end of the show. Now, coming up, two party leaders are on Parliament Hill today rallying their MPs. Both are laying out their vision for the upcoming session of the House of Commons. We'll have more on that story and other national and international news that's up later here on Commons. For news you can trust, we have the latest on what's happening in your community. And a weather forecast you can rely on no matter where you are in Atlantic Canada. I'm Amy Smith. And I'm Ryan Snug. Join us for Atlantic tonight. Right after the National. <coughs> hey, Ryan, really, does this go in the box? Oh. Yes, so I think Dad says everything has to go. And that's right, Rooney. Everything has to go. For 30 years, the team here at Good Guys have been helping customers with all their auto glass needs. We are moving to a new location, but you can still count on that dependable Good Guys service that you've come to expect. And you Remember the good guys. Introducing Triburst from Bell & Howell, the new LED triple panel socket light that's crazy bright. It'll transform any area from dim to ultra bright. And that's all because of its 144 high intensity LED bulbs. Get Triburst today for just $39.99. Plus, we'll even ship it to you free. But act right now and you can get a second Triburst. Just pay a separate fee. So don't strain to see at night. Order Triburst from Bell & Howell. Here at Summerside Toyota, we're committed to helping you find your everyday Toyota. Toyota 
is Canada's only full-line auto manufacturer. We have everything from compact cars to full-size SUVs and trucks. Stop in at Summerside Toyota today, and we'll help you find your everyday Toyota. Summerside Toyota is the first stop for your next do-it-yourself project. For everything from new flooring or a complete bathroom reno to just changing your home's color scheme, we have the materials, supplies, and exceptional service to make your DIY project a success. And when it comes to expert advice, you can always count on our experienced team of professionals to steer you in the right direction. We're the first stop for your next DIY project. Summerside Home Hardware right next to Summerside Home Furniture. This is Aura's Key When you use a key tag, you protect your key. It's the electric key. The finder can pull the number on the back of the tag. Or drop them in any mail box. And the more us will return your keys to you. For free. Or to your key tag today at orange.ca. And make a difference in the lives of amputees. Like me. <coughs> On our island, the extended no. winter forecast is calling for 100% chance of fun with periods of outdoor adventure and family activities. You can also expect Why? a mix of delicious food and cozy accommodations, which just so happens to create the ideal conditions for romance. I don't know. I island, where the forecast always calls for uh, the perfect uh, winter getaway. Uh, ExplorePEI.com. This is my Everybody has family. My name is Cookie. Um, Street Lake Cookie. Selling hey. bread and wine <laughs> is a family business. I'm the flash. She's the cash. Driving my father into the I have so much rent all we had. If we don't see the honey, that won't make money. It's not going so well. The trick is to find old generation and new generation too. Welcome to Bollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Conservative leader Pierre Polyev were both on Parliament Hill today rallying their MPs, meeting with their caucuses ahead of the return to the House of Commons next week. With Ashley Burke reports they both laid out priorities while taking aim at each other. What's happening in our country? Seriously, look around you. These are difficult times right now. This is a pivotal moment. Two leaders with dueling messages trading blows. When you twist the facts <laughs> and make things up for political gain, that's not responsible leadership. You told us that better was always possible, and yet everything is worse and you blame everyone else. Both Conservative leader Pierre Polyev and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau addressing their caucuses today, trying to position themselves ahead of Parliament's return. We're beginning a new year, <laughs> and more than ever, it's important to reaffirm our positive vision for a stronger future together. Trudeau said the Liberals you are focusing more? on improving health care, offsetting the rising cost of living, and investments in clean tech. Pollyanna is pitching Canada as broken, blaming Trudeau for a spike in crime, inflation woes, and trouble at airports. Let me tell you something, Justin. There is pain in the faces you do not see. There is suffering in the voices you do not hear. And there is distress and even chaos in the places you do not go. <laughs> if you don't believe me, come with me. So there are politicians like Mr. Polyev who have no real solutions to offer and who just try to exploit the anger and concerns that people do have. The liberal vision for the future could not be more different than Mr. Polyev's version. Polyev bluntly accusing Trudeau of failing to help struggling Canadians. If you're not responsible for any of these things, if you can't do anything about it, then why don't you get out of the way and let someone lead who can? While Trudeau and Polyev personal in their attacks today and increasingly aggressive in their rhetoric against each other, a preview of what to expect when they're face-to-face -face next week. Ashley Burke, CBC News, Ottawa.
A former member of Justin Trudeau's cabinet is questioning the government's dedication to fighting harassment and abuse in sports. She says when she was a minister, before scandals put a spotlight on the issue, the government showed little interest. The CBC's Devin Haru has the story. Speaking exclusively to CBC News, former Sport Minister Kirsty Duncan says there was a climate of resistance on sport policy she was introducing both from Liberal colleagues and sport officials. And she says she faced pushback when she made tackling abuse a top priority. I will not stand idly by while there are athletes, children and young people hurting in this country. And I do not accept the status quo. And yeah, I'm I do not wish for an inquiry. Uh oh. It means accepting the status quo. Up. And I will not be complicit. Mm -hmm. Duncan introduced a number of safe sport of measures chair? as sport minister in 2018 and 2019, I don't think you can. including a helpline and a third party investigation unit. She was not reappointed to cabinet by Trudeau after the 2019 election. Duncan says she felt her safe sport initiatives were not given the attention they deserved after she left office. Trudeau dropped the position of sport minister at the time and folded those responsibilities into the heritage minister's portfolio. Stephen Gilbo was a minister at the time. A senior government source acknowledges other priorities required more attention, including how sports organizations should respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. The source also said they totally understand Duncan's claim that more could have been done to move forward on safe sport initiatives. Duncan is frustrated. I don't think people understood the problem. There wasn't a lot of interest in Parliament. I asked what we were doing and I was told that we had to stop this safe sport stuff and get back to what sport was really about. My answer was, so not protecting children? Current sport minister Pascal St. Ange was asked about Duncan's claim that the government isn't doing enough to protect athletes in the country. I can tell you that we're taking it extremely seriously. Uh, that's why we've invested $16 million in the last budget just to create the Office of the Sports Integrity Commissioner because we felt it was so important to have that independent mechanism. Duncan believes a public inquiry to unearth what she calls sports dirty secrets <laughs> around physical and sexual abuse is the only way forward now. Devin Haru, Locks. CBC News, Toronto. <laughs> CBC News has learned of a serious <laughs> breach of privacy by a federal party. For some time, members of the Green Party and their voters had their personal and sensitive information posted online for all to see. David Thurton has that story. People's names, their personal addresses, their phone numbers, even their dates of birth, all of it up for grabs on the Green Party of Canada's website. CBC viewed spreadsheets in a Google Drive, <coughs> left on one, and inside were rows of sensitive information. One of those files contained the personal information of 26,000 Canadians, an alarming discovery according to a privacy expert. Appalling. I'm sorry, I just find that so appalling that the, the Green Party would post this information, make it publicly available. All of this can be very, very sensitive, especially used in the non wrong context for different <coughs> purposes. It's nobody else's business. So it, I'm appalled by the fact that this is taking place. This privacy breach comes as the Greeks have undergone <coughs> some changes recently. Elizabeth May has returned to the leadership position and they have a new executive director. Nevertheless, the party says in a statement that this data breach should have never happened. They've already begun investigations into figuring out how this happened. And most importantly, the information that was in public view has been removed. David Thurton, CBC News. Well, well, well. Guess what? <laughs> At least seven people I know how have it been killed and ten others wounded oh. in an attack near a synagogue in Jerusalem. So I knew far, how no it claim of responsibility, no, but police say they have shot the killed with the, the attack. On it. Tensions in the area have it. escalated rapidly oh. since yesterday after an Israeli <clears> force <throat> raid killed nine Palestinians by in the occupied West Bank. Sasha Patterson has this report.
Gunfire echoed through Jerusalem as Israeli Jews headed to Sabbath prayers Friday night. Moments later, bodies laid on the road near a synagogue. Others were rushed to hospital with serious injuries. Israeli officials say a Palestinian gunman had opened fire in a Jewish neighborhood in East Jerusalem, an area claimed by Palestinians but occupied by Israel. The gunman was shot and killed by police. The shootings mark the deadliest escalation in the conflict between Israel and Palestinians in more than a year. No Palestinian group has claimed responsibility for tonight's attack, but militant group Hamas says it's in retaliation for an Israeli raid on Janine yesterday, a community in the occupied West Bank where nine Palestinians were killed. Today's attack also follows a barrage of rockets fired from Gaza into Israel and an Israeli air raid on the Palestinian territory overnight. Sasha Petrusik, CBC News, Toronto. This is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, when the world remembers the six million Jews who were murdered before and during the Second World War. Well, today, 78 years after it was liberated by Soviet forces, survivors and other mourners <coughs> gathered at the Auschwitz-Birkenau State Museum in Poland. Adonai Shema Bekoli Kibet Adonai Kibet Anafshi more than a million people were murdered by the Nazis in this camp alone. The vast majority of the victims were Jews, but Poles, Roma, and Soviet prisoners of war were also killed here, most in gas chambers. This museum is located 300 kilometers from the Ukraine border, and speakers at the service spoke of the war there and their hopes that peace will be restored in Europe. Now, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spoke at a ceremony to mark the anniversary in Ottawa, he said Canadians need to show vigilance in the face of hate and anti-Semitic rhetoric. Lately, we have seen hateful <clears throat> and anti-Semitic rhetoric coming from dark well, corners of our society. To die and, uh, Canadians were horrified yes. to see Nazi flags brought to Ottawa last year. They pass out before they the die. Effect. What? They hate pass out before they die. Oh, okay. Online and on other platforms. It wasn't instantaneous. And so. Let's put it that cannot, way. Yeah. must not okay. be complacent. in for a shower. And victims of shower the Holocaust are being gas, commemorated okay. around okay. the world yeah. today. Educators are working to ensure the important <laughs> lessons of the Holocaust are shared with younger generations. Deanna Sumanek Johnson reports. In Montreal, many educators, some of them Jewish by background, some not, have taken it upon themselves to share with kids in an age-appropriate way what happened in the Holocaust and why they must not forget it. Because it happened and it impacted not just soldiers, it impacted children, families, the elderly, babies. When you bring it down to the human level and you make them realize it could happen, to anyone for any reason and we start to explore that as a human experience instead of simply as oh that's only something that would happen to the Jewish people the children began <clears throat> to make connections and they realized this is a larger global issue still few things can match the power of that first-hand Holocaust survivor testimony even if there are sadly very few Holocaust survivors left to share that story at 90 years of age Ping Hasbuter is never tired to share his story with school children Ping Hasbuter was just 11 years old when his entire family including his twin sister perished at the hands of the Nazis and he said despite it all what happened to him all the hatred happening in the world today, he is still hopeful, hopeful that he can pass on the message to young people and they can carry it on into the future. Have a listen. I say, I have a torch, and my torch has got more than one flame. It's got many flames, but I'll just give you five of them. And those, that torch has got no religious discrimination, no racial discrimination, no homophobia, no xenophobia, and above all, no hatred. Hatred is vicious, it's pernicious, it creates anger. And I'm handing this over to you. 
These flames, I'm handing it over to you. Carrying that torch of not letting the hate and intolerance of today oh, become the tragedy so of tomorrow. <laughs> Deanna Sumanak Johnson, CBC News, Toronto. Many in the United States are waiting for the release tonight of a police video and what reaction it might bring. <laughs> It will show the events leading up to a black man's death, a death that's led to five officers being charged with second-degree murder. Cameron McIntosh reports. So far, the memorials and demonstrations have been peaceful, but Memphis is bracing for outrage with the imminent release of the video of the police beating Tyree Nichols. His family preemptively calling for calm. We do not want any type of uproar. We do not want any type of disturbance. We want peaceful protests. Speaking this afternoon, Nichols' family had little to say about the video, which has been described as cruel and inhumane. Nichols, a 29-year-old father, died in hospital three days after being pulled over for alleged reckless driving. An altercation happened. Police beat, tased, and pepper sprayed him. Five officers have been fired, charged with second-degree murder, accused of brutality against a black man. The officers <coughs> are also black. Justice for Tyree! Justice for Tyree! The family and their lawyers are lauding the quick charges while insisting this become the new standard in police brutality cases, regardless of the officer's race. It doesn't matter if the officer is a black officer, a Hispanic officer, or a white officer. It is the culture that allows them to think they can do this to Tyree. As for the video, the Memphis police chief warns... You're gonna see acts that <clears throat> defy humanity you're gonna see um, a disregard for life it's not just memphis on edge in washington the capitol building it's being fenced off president biden saying he expects outrage nickel's mother insisting her family wants change i just want to ask for prayer for my family for my, this whole community the timing of the release is all about the expected anger, the idea that putting it out on a Friday night, people will already be home from work or school, less likely to get caught up in whatever might happen. Cameron McIntosh, CBC News, Washington. Travel restrictions may have ended last spring in the Northwest Territories, allowing for tourists to return. Yeah, but many operators say they're seeing less than half the number of visitors they did before the start of the pandemic. Luke Carroll takes a look at what's behind it. <laughs> Operators and tourism leaders are attributing the low tourism numbers to the fact that travel in general hasn't returned to pre-pandemic levels. Some say tourism is around 20 to 30 percent of what it was pre-COVID. There have also been other issues, including a lack of flights into Yellowknife and constant overcast for the month of January. It's my first season to work here. And it's been great for me, but Probably it's be a bad for the guests because it's been unusually warm, and once it gets warmer, it gets you know cloudy, and oh, it makes the snow, right? <laughs> Luckily, sunny weather is in the forecast for Yellowknife next week, and more flights are going to be arriving as soon as mid-February. But Yellowknife isn't the only community <laughs> experiencing a lack of visitors. Kylie Kasun Taylor runs Tundra North Tours in Anubik. He says it's also experiencing that post-COVID travel lull. And it's been made worse by a lack of amenities in Anubic. I think it's just a matter of uh, things recovering, but also our region recovering. Um, a lot of wholesalers, a lot of um, bigger companies that sell our tours are having a hard time because of the uh, amenities that just aren't available. You, know, there's, you bring up some clients, but they've got no place to eat. It's kind of a basic human need. He said the pandemic has made recovery harder, and they've had to change their business format, including moving their facility entirely onto the land. But although there are less visitors, he said there have been some benefits to that. Like you don't want to create an industry where um, it just consumes you. <laughs> it consumes your region and your resources and your people. You want to. You want to create something that enhances it. Kasun Taylor said he's happy to let visitors experience the Arctic the culturally appropriate way. Luke Carroll, CBC News, Yellowknife. Residents of a neighborhood in Montreal, they're furious after being informed that parking in their driveways is illegal. They want to know why the sudden crackdown using a bylaw that hasn't been enforced in decades. Steve Rukavina has more. 
<laughs> Martine Corbet has lived here since 1997. She's always parked her car on the driveway out front. Last August, she got a letter from the borough. It said that we were not allowed to park in front of our house uh, according, uh, according to this, 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 uh, this bylaw. That will complicate things for her, given she has an electric car with a charger attached to the house. The bylaw was drafted in 1974, when Jean Drapeau was still made. It says parking isn't allowed in any driveways in front of homes unless those driveways lead to a garage. Corbet and many of her neighbors have homes where garages have been converted to living spaces. She says about a dozen people in her neighborhood receive the same letter she did. Corbet doesn't understand why, after ignoring the bylaw for decades, the borough is suddenly concerned. The borough mayor was unavailable for an interview, but in a statement he says, <laughs> the situation came to our attention yeah, after we received a complaint from a local resident. The regulation is still relevant today to protect green spaces, prevent flooding, and increase pedestrian security. Corbet says none of those explanations make any sense. She doesn't understand why her driveway poses more of a problem than a driveway in front of a garage. I guess we have to have some rules, some structure, but at one point, 50 years later, if you realize that, well, this doesn't make sense anymore, <clears throat> why don't you just sit down and try to find a solution that's costless, it doesn't cost anything, it's, I guess, relatively easy. So to me, it's, it's, it's absurd. The borough mayor says he's looking at changing the bylaw, particularly to accommodate electric vehicles, but for now, it stays. Steve Rukavina, CBC News, Montreal. We'll make it back-to-back -back positive days in the market. Some more gains again today. The TSX is up about 14 points. The Dow Jones in New York up as well, nearly 30 points. And the NASDAQ saw a 109-point gain. The Canadian dollar continued its climb, now back up over 75 cents U.S. for the first time in a while after a more than a tenth of a cent gain. And finally, the West Texas down. crude oil it lost some uh, value to end the week. The gas went up here, but crude oil went down. And it's back down under $80 oh. U.S. a barrel. All right, we're back. Are you a frog? Hi, Tony. <laughs> Woo! Are you Tony or a froggy? So which one to call now, please? The adventure begins. Hey, George, Matt, let's go and start. Let me introduce myself. I'm the Persian Gallery store manager, Jason Lefty Glenn. Around here, chance of fun, with periods of outdoor adventure and fun no. activities. Mm -hmm. You can also expect a mix of delicious <laughs> food and wrong. cozy accommodations, Lego. which just so happens to create the ideal conditions for romance. Prince Edward Island, where the forecast always calls for mm. the perfect winter getaway. Prince Edward Island. Mm. ExplorePEI.com well, poor Ron, he can't drink anymore. We turn our country no. into one giant obstacle <laughs> course. Twenty-four complete strangers become sixteen, coached by six legendary sports heroes. Touching a bottle a bit too much lately. Put to the ultimate test. Would you touch him a bottle a little too much lately? Physical challenge. Only one team will be champion. Please with us. Oh, that's it. Ultimate challenge on CBC. Stream free on CBC Channel. I'm Andrew Chang, the host of a new show on a new channel. 
the channel is CBC News Explore, and that's what we do here. We explore the news. That is actually happening the way today. Said Brazil it. spent the second most yeah. new ideas <laughs> with a twist. We dig deep into the stories, we slow things down, and we figure it out together. Tell me about his potential opponents. You can get it 24 hours a day, and it's free. What does that have to do with FTX and what the CBC News Explore?
i turned that into a career and hit the road. mr. johnny hammond! now i'm on a mission to find a plane in the places you least expect canada's struggling small town towns that are against the ropes but hanging in there still laughing in the face of adversity this is babadale number nine to labrador <laughs> inside out. The Sora has been in his family for five generations. My great grandfather started the back in What kind of stuff would he be selling there? He'd be selling the rubber boots. They all have skins. And the food at the end of it, he'd be selling the hard bread, the solid pork, the solid beef. Survival food. Survival food. This almost seems to me like your store is the hub of sorts. Well, that's true because we have the high school just behind it. Oh, I was going to say there are still ones from the store. Oh, no, 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 no. And we have to post off the town hall oh, for oh, all. It's all within that half a kilometer radius. Right, that's that's the center of the town. You see? You're in the heart of the downtown. You're, well, you're, 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 you're downtown out there. What does it get set? Yeah. <laughs> But Harold told me there is a great tradition here of migratory workers. The people that can stay do stay. The people that leave are people that they just got to go and get employment because it's just not here, right? Tell me a little bit about the history of Avondale. What was the industry to uh, the early 1900s? So the fishing industry. Yeah. That was a unique type of fishing. It wasn't yeah. inshore. It wasn't offshore. It was done on the Labrador coast. And then, of course, oh. it's too serious. Though. Oh, I'm in a couple of weeks. He's penniless and lives in a wigwam. <laughs> Wait, I've got to have something going for him, is it? Magic fingers. You should try one of his massages. Oh, 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 oh. You have a chance. <laughs> Meditation is a spiritual job. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Forgive me, mademoiselle, but it is important to feel at one with the environment. <laughs> Clothes have no place. <laughs> In the past, it'd be Elsie going on stage, inspiring people. Men sana in corpore sana. A healthy mind and a healthy body. Indeed. That was a mantra. Anyway, over the top we go. Tell them what. He served his time. What makes you think he's still dangerous? 
It's been four years. He swore he'd kill us all for testifying. Perhaps that was just said in the moment. What would he gain by seeking revenge? He's unhinged, a maniac. People can and do change. That's what I thought when I gave him the job. Where it got me. Whereabouts did you see him? He was working at Chaucer's tea room. Well, he's seeking employment. That's a good sign. He's had time to think in prison. Perhaps he's trying to make a new start. I hope so, Father. For all our sakes. Feel connected with nature. Absorb the energy all our heart. Oh, he lives Don't in a wigwam. He wears okay. yellow pants. Well, you can see why I like him. Within and uh, without. Deeper. Keep your eyes closed and repeat. You need special attention. Don't. Leave it alone, yeah? What's it to you? You say it. Occupe toi de tes oignons, hein? Put some clothes on.
Finn Murphy. I wasn't sure you'd come, Father. Most people won't give me the time of day. I'd invite you inside, but it's a bit of a mistake. I hear you found a job. Yes. I just want to live a normal life, Father. Be like everyone else. Why did you ask to see me, Philippa? Elsie <coughs> Peters. I want someone to give her a message. I assume she still has one of your parishioners. Why don't you speak to her yourself? After what I've done, I can't. She's very worried about your release. There is nothing to fear. No? Something happened to me inside, Father. There was a chap and I opened my eyes. You found God? No. He found me. <coughs> I despised the person I was. <coughs> Terrible things I've done. Huh. I used to take so much pleasure in hurting people. Can't do that without a man But not anymore. That person no longer exists. Alligator in the kitchen. What is your message to Elsie? I just wanted to know that I won't come near her again. No, I am sorry. Alligator coming out of the kitchen. You look a little bit, um, a bit queasy, sir. <laughs> As an officer of the law, I have an iron constitution. His name is Finbar Finch. I was talking to him moments before it happened. He was released from prison five days ago, sir. Well, at least he won't be reoffending. Did you see anyone else? No. But I had a car driving away, and there are time marks beyond the trees. Uh, there's also a shotgun shell, sir. Langbridge Limited. I stepped out from behind the tree. Bang! Straight in a kisser. Someone must have really hated his guts. I like your haircut there, buddy. What's this? A lady's broke. Sydney Carter! Oh, there you are. Sydney! 
Did you see that? Would you look at the state of me? Take me home! <laughs> and there's no need for that, Mrs. McCarthy. As compensation, I would like to offer you a free beauty treatment. <laughs> My dress is wet. I'll take care of that. And in the meantime, you can relax in the hot air room. In the hot air <laughs> Well, that's very kind of you. Let's get you a robe. <laughs> Tip-tip. Uh, so uh -huh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Is it wrong? <coughs> to feel happy that someone is dead. I suspect that what you're feeling is relief. Ah. After years of dreading Finbar's return. Ethan. <coughs> We're questioning anyone who has a motive. Tell me, do you own a gun? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you don't think I've got anything to do with it. May I see it, please? What for? I have a license. Where <laughs> is it? <laughs> I keep it behind the desk. <laughs> behind the desk. <laughs> this place is hardly for knocks. Well, it makes me feel... It makes Elsie feel safe. <laughs> Famous Barambo. Gil on. A sister. Oh, wow. Ah, yes. What make your cartridges do you use? Hurry, post one? Oh, it's equal. You recognize this? Ah. Good answer. Who's finally a few by Finch's body? Thank you, Padre. And where was Lola around midday? Well, she took off my jeep, too. Yes. Easy Kubar! Kubar! I've been our shells. Oh. Uh -huh. How you say? Toba Boyo. Snaps Wooney. Harvini. Bars Ba Hersenoy. Woohoo! Bash no Limla. That is. Oh, okay. Can I 
Inspector Mallory insisted I go through all of Mr. Finch's possessions. With a son. Can I help? I don't think the powers that be would appreciate your help, Father. No. Mm. And anyway, I'm all done here. Just about to leave. Ah. You've got two minutes, Father. And then I'm locking up.
Is he going to be all right? You need to speak to the doctors at the hospital. Drinking on the job, sir. Is that what the captain was eating before he collapsed? We need to test it for poison, Father. Not a great carrot. No. No, you're a food critic. There's no end to your talents. It's that grated fruit. Peach or apricot. What? Uh, 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 who prepared the food? Lona made the dishes this morning. She's a nutritionist. But it looks like she's trying to kill for a second time. But don't we have that, Preston? <coughs> what would be a monkey, though, sir? That's Captain Peter the crossroads. <coughs> <coughs> In my book, Death Spells Gate. Mrs. McCarthy, why are you still wearing your dressing gown? Because Sydney knocked me into the mud, brawling with Lola's young man. I haven't seen him since this morning. That's because he had a train to catch. Lola sent him packing back to London. Trains aren't running. Well, he could have got a bus or a taxi. Huh? His skin. Lola had to pay for both their tickets. He was in the spa kitchen this morning. Where Captain Peter's food was prepared, was it now? <coughs> I think I'll see if he's turned up. <coughs> uses for his meditation cup. Yes. Where is it? Is that blood? Maybe he's injured. Or killed. Ah. Well, uh, if that's the case, then the poem, the apricot, and the receipt. It all makes sense. Uh, what receipt? Uh, for a new set of clothes. Zimona, and Elsie is finally <laughs> on the road. Oh, we need to get back. Parabola. Well, can we try? Like it Tell me, 
You were reading the poem Antigonus. Is that what gave you the idea to fake your own death? No, it wasn't that. <laughs> but to pull it off, you needed someone of similar build and hair colour. Et voilà, Serge. in his pocket, the first part of your plan was complete. And the second part? To find a stolid, respectable member of the public as a witness. So the old Bill would have questioned the body was. Thank <laughs> you. 
it's invaluable for us to be able to reach out to the community and get the feedback and i think this is a, a magical place where people get involved with their food in, in multiple different aspects <laughs> We're going to be making a garden herb chimichurri today. Uh, this is a great thing to do if you've got herb pots in your windowsill or a community garden that you can source herbs from. We use it on meat and fish to enhance the flavors. We've got margarine, parsley, we're using anise in it. It's a licorice flavor. This is just a rough chop that we're doing to, to get these all kind of combined. You can start to get the aroma and the the smells of all the different herbs. <coughs> we have a pretty good fine amount here, and we're going to put it in a bowl and mix in some of our other ingredients. And then making sure to hold my knife flat so I'm not scraping the edge of my knife and making it dull as I put it in. For about a cup of chopped herbs, we're going to use about a tablespoon of chopped garlic. And a generous pinch of uh, red pepper flake. We're going to put some uh, ground pepper in and salt. And about a quarter cup of lemon juice. And then for the olive oil, it's about a half a cup, quarter cup. We want a little bit of a residual oil in here so that it can kind of spread evenly. So we have a nice green chimichurri made of garden herbs. Bringing people out onto the farm here triggers a lot of memories of people's childhoods of connecting with vegetables in different ways. That kind of fills our cups, like hearing push -up. people enjoy what we're doing. Made there is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you and visit Kitsap Peninsula. Thank you to Made There's supporting sponsor, the Greater Kitsap Chamber. The roots have inspired me. Just how genre can be made grand, epic, iconic collaborations. These institutions sort of have an understanding that it's a new day. I would have loved to see the groups that I grew up admiring in the houses. This is a genre of music that really shapes us as people. Tonight at 9 on KCTS 9. Quick Feet believes that running changes everything. <laughs> Allison and Mary Ellen Fusia. We host fundraisers, training groups, and events. Whether you're training for your first mile or your 50th marathon, we're here to run. <laughs> Real cases, real people. Right. Judge Judy. Nicole McClure says a cat owned by neighbor Betty Del Porto attacked her dog. So what makes you think you're not responsible for the victim? Because I don't believe I am. I mean, my cat wasn't on a leash. There is no leash law in California. No, you choose to let your cat outside. The cat doesn't have to be on a leash. That doesn't mean you're not responsible. Oh, my right. God. <laughs> the Nargat may be squishy. Wow. Solid shot. If you choose to allow. Ivana. Vanessa. Love the new song. Hey. And scratches the baby's eyes out. You're going to be responsible. Cool. Hey. You're going to be responsible. Beth Dago Shore. Brett no Quinn. Varik B. Ralph. Illinois. Weezer the Bee. Illinois. Say Panda. Did you go to an Boy Mick Faroo. If you have an animal and you choose to let that animal go outside, out of your control. Then the if it causes damage, oh, you so as the that. cat's owner are responsible. That's the law. You don't have to have the cat on a leash if there's no leash law. But if it's not on a leash, it causes damage, you're responsible. Does she have no responsibility, though, to control her dog, keep it from straying out? No, 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 madam. I just listened very carefully to what you told me. And what you told me was you didn't see where your cat was coming from. Probably you're coming from yeah. like this car is, is what good? you surmised. And went all the way in the street and came up to her. She was standing by the rock. That's what you said. Yes. That's what you said. With her cat <laughs> sword. And, and you jumped on <coughs> her dog and scratched its ear. That's what you told my 
who are experiencing sensitivity have to make compromises in their day-to-day -day life. New Sensodyne Repair and Protect with Deep Repair it goes deep into the tooth to help repair sensitive. 6.54 on your Friday night, minus 5 in Moncton. As we take a look at the Patagodiac River, I'm told the winds are out of the north. Okay. <laughs> there you have it. It feels like the winds are out of the north. <laughs> now, now you can go along with your Friday night if you're on London and you know the winds are out of the north. So it's, it's certainly a little colder out here this evening, that's for sure. And uh, we do have some colder temperatures coming up for tonight. The winds are going to be getting light and variable in direction around the maritime as we move towards midnight, but lack of cloud cover will help with things getting on the colder side as well. Uh, Let's take a look at our hero picture of uh, tonight. This is a beautiful shot. This is coming in from Cheryl Canning from Amherst, Nova Scotia. Beautiful colors here. I believe this was a sunset picture. Uh, I want to thank Cheryl very much for sending that mm. picture my way. Uh, Amherst, the forecast for tomorrow we should be off to a break for cold to start to the day, followed by increasing cloudiness, and then in the afternoon there'll be a chance of a flurry or shower oh, as temperatures uh, get towards 2 degrees. Alright, let's take a look at our day plan for Saturday across the entirety of the region. So it's going to be a cold for morning for all three mm. maritime provinces. There'll be some cloud cover that's beginning to increase into western areas of New Brunswick and the southwest of Nova Scotia. Uh, as we move into Saturday afternoon, that cloud cover That's continues nice. to fill in from the west to east across yeah. the Maritimes. <laughs> And there is going to be a chance of seeing some flurries. The flurries will be most widespread in areas of New Brunswick. And then a chance of a flurry or shower around southwestern areas of Nova Scotia. Todd. Okay, Kaylin, yeah. you have a great weekend. Thank you very much. CDB National News comes our way at 11. Let's check in now with Halifax's own John Vinavalli Ralfer. Tonight, a new snapshot of Canada's tightening rental market. That's the lowest level it's been at in 20 years. Lows up. And now during the Nissan Thrillology sales event, the prices going through the roof later on CTV National News. Thank you, John. Finally tonight, some students near Ottawa headed outside to make snow angels today for a great cause. <laughs> Three, two, one, go, go, go! It's called the Snow Angel Challenge. On February 1st, the month-long Snow Angel Challenge officially kicks off to support a snowsuit fund. For the entire month, people in and around the Ottawa area, they're encouraged to make a snow angel and share the picture on social media with a link to donate to the... Did you plug into the phone? He told me it's 4321. It's not even close. It's not even close. It's not one digit off. It's not two digits off. It's not... So the number that you told us. 
four three two one, not six three six zero. That doesn't even sound. You, you don't have a hearing problem. You have outrageous. Can I see him? That goes. No. Anaya. Judging for the plaintiff, we came out to three hundred and five dollars. We do Thank you. Thank you. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. My opinion's the only one that counts. Yeah, she gave me a big number. That's a lie. There was absolutely no way that I could have gotten that number wrong. I was a government official for 15 years. I don't tell lies. She had a big cut in her cartilage on her left ear. There was blood everywhere. It's it's what she says, but I don't agree with her. I, I was horrified. The cat only attacked a dog because the dog was pulling on the leash to get to the cat. Like, it was just so out of the blue. And the cat was afraid. I hope that she controls her cat. And its best friend is a great game, so it's not like it's afraid of dogs. Yeah, my dog's gonna be fine. Local news as it happens, local weather before it happens, and local sports stories way before they hit the national news. And at Fox13Seattle.com, we're here for it. If your furnace is acting up or struggling to keep your home warm, call Black Hills now, and one of our friendly comfort superheroes will make sure you and your family are cozy <laughs> all year long. For a limited time, get a full furnace tune-up for only $189. On the aisle, save up to 80% buying factory direct. Compare this famous brand's one-carat band at $8,800 with the jewelry exchanges for $12.99. One-carat engagement brings $26.90. Thousands of items guaranteed to appraise for double. The jewelry exchange rented. We have three sisters, the drummer, the dribbler, and the daydreamer. The dribbler is getting hands-on practice with her Chase First Banking debit card. The drummer is making savings simple with a <laughs> And this dreamer, well, she's still learning how to budget, so mom keeps her alert on full volume. Hey! What? It's true! And that's all thanks to Chase First Banking. Freedom for kids, control for parents. One thing.